The Senate Judiciary Committee has voted to repeal the Anti-Gay Defense of Marriage Act. Now it moves to a full Senate that's hostile to marriage equality. But that's actually okay. I'm Matt Baum at the American Foundation for Equal Rights, and welcome to a special episode of Marriage News Watch. On one side, 10 Senate co-sponsors of the Respect for Marriage Act. That's Patrick Leahy of Vermont, Herb Cole of Wisconsin, Dianne Feinstein of California, Chuck Schumer of New York, Dick Durbin of Illinois, Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, Amy Klobuchar and Al Franken of Minnesota, Christopher Coons of Delaware, and Dick Blumenthal of Connecticut. On the other side, eight opponents of marriage equality. That's Chuck Grassley of Iowa, Orrin Hatch of Utah, John Kyle of Arizona, Jeff Sessions of Alabama, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, John Cornyn of Texas, Michael Lee of Utah, and Tom Coburn of Oklahoma. Right now, the case against DOMA is racing through all three branches of government. This latest advance is the legislative branch, but the executive branch also stands against DOMA, and there's a slew of cases working their way through federal courts. Meanwhile, though Afer's case Perry v. Brown concerns Prop 8 instead of DOMA, the arguments are similar. Marriage discrimination violates the Constitution of the United States, whether it's DOMA or whether it's Proposition 8. Orrin Hatch may have had the hearing's strangest argument. He claimed that DOMA protects state rights. But no, look at the law. DOMA has three parts. Part one's just the name. Part two prevents couples from moving their marriages from one state to another. So if you're married in Iowa and you move to Utah, your marriage evaporates and there's nothing Iowa can do to protect you. Part three is even worse. It changed the federal definition of marriage, forcing federal agencies to ignore marriages. So if you're married in Iowa and you stay in Iowa, every single federal agency will work to undermine your marriage. That's why this state-by-state -state patchwork of marriage laws is so unfair. You're married over here, you're not over there, you have to fill out four different sets of taxes. The YMCA can tell that you're married, but the IRS can't. This is why full federal marriage equality is the only solution. Senator Whitehouse put it best. He said that his constituents in Rhode Island are prejudiced needlessly under this law. We owe them better. We should treat their commitment with respect. And Senator Franken was even more succinct. DOMA hurts families. The 10 to 8 victory for the Respect for Marriage Act means it now moves to the full Senate, where it has the support of 31 senators. It's pretty unlikely that it'll be brought up for a vote anytime soon, but that's fine. It gives time for support to grow in Congress. Meanwhile, our case continues its expedited progress through the federal courts. Ari Ezra Waldman had a great piece on Toll Road this week about why we get more strength from legal arguments than from popular elections. Remember the misleading ads in California? Our proponents spent millions to trick Californians into thinking that Proposition 8 had something to do with protecting marriage. But when they're in court, they're under oath and limited by the compulsion to tell the truth. And that's why they're trying to hide. They want to hide their names, they want to hide their arguments, they want to hide the tapes of the trial, because they know they have no case. And if the country had voted on interracial marriage, it wouldn't have been legal until the 1990s. It was a visionary Supreme Court that ruled in Loving v. Virginia that marriage is one of the basic civil rights of man, and that marriage bans are subversive to the principle of equality at the heart of the 14th Amendment. In fact, the Supreme Court has ruled 14 times that marriage is a fundamental American freedom. And soon, we're going to make that 15 times. See you in court.